It's been a few weeks since the Standing Committee on Public Accounts paid an oversight a visit to the Road Accidents Fund and found it in a shambles. Scopa concluded that there needs to be a full forensic investigation and described the entity's board as unfit for purpose. How has this affected the processing of claims, sir? And what's being done to ensure the entity is brought back to full uh, fitness? We're joined now by the Deputy Transport Minister, Lisa Mantru, who joins us virtually um, from uh, Cape Town. Thank you so much for your time uh, this evening, Deputy Minister. Um, it feels like a long time, but it was just last month um, that we saw some rather shocking um, uh, video evidence even from the head offices of the RAF. I believe some of the words used was a car wreck, shambolic, just some of the words that were used by the members of Scopa while they were still busy with their site inspection um, at the RAF's Pretoria office just last month. Have you had the time to process some of that feedback that you would have received by now? Yes, good evening, Marcel. Thank you very much to you and your viewers. Of course, yes, we are hard at work every day together with the Road Accident Fund to do review of all the processes and the things that might be affecting the entity. However, where Scopa visited is not the head office of Road Accident Fund, but it is one of the outlets which unfortunately is not a representation of all the outlets in the country if we were to look at others. But we have reflected and we are convinced that uh, there are measures in place to address any eventualities that would have been reflected on by SCOPA. What were some of those eventualities? Can you, can you perhaps let us in on what some of those more immediate findings were that you think an immediate solution can be found for? One of them is that Scopa complained that uh, most of the furniture is attached by the sheriffs of different areas. That is true. The reason that the furniture or assets are attached is that lawyers will hold on to those um, legal documents that authorize them to attach so that they can pounce at the same time without giving the road accident fund enough, enough time to respond. So it is a situation that uh, is a matter of reaction uh, to what the road accident fund is doing to address a whole lot of many years of the accident fund not being managed properly. So the issue of uh, furniture is what was raised by SCOPA, but it's not a reflection of all offices, but that office mainly, which for whatever reason, many lawyers would prefer to go and lodge in it and not lodge in Cape Town, for instance, where they could lodge. Uh, that was one of the critical things. The other thing was the issue of uh, allegation of staff morale that is low, it might well be that there are staff that might be feeling disgruntled. However, the majority of staff within the Road Accident Fund are very committed and are always in the front line serving people uh, with distinction, to say the least, despite whatever challenges they might be facing. Those are two examples mm. I could think of that Scopa had reflected on. Um, obviously, taking on board what you said, that that wasn't the head office that they visited, but it is indeed an outlet that perhaps is not a reflection of all of the offices of RAF, I take, completely take that on board. But let's deal with what we were able to see during that visitation. I mean, at the Pretoria office, and, and you'd think that the Pretoria office of RAF, it being the capital, would still be an important outlet, even though one of many. Um, you could see paperwork in boxes, lining corridors, and even in the basement parking, and, and, and the list goes on. Um, would you admit, though, from um, an optics point of view, that that would not fill um, one with um, uh, confidence that you're dealing with an entity that is going about its important business um, uh, every day in the, in the best possible way? How is the South African public supposed to have faith that their claims are being investigated and processed uh, correctly if this is the face of this entity that they have put all of their faith into? Well, as it relates to optics, as you've said, I would agree with you. 
when you look at it and not understand what is in those boxes, you might obviously conclude in that way. However, the majority of those boxes are sitting empty with papers that are literally empty. How did they come to be there? It's because those within road accident fund who have been colluding, some of them, very few number, I must add, with uh, some people outside would submit, for instance, empty claims, which are against legislation. And these things will end up in boxes. Uh, secondly, the legislation of the road accident fund as it sits now doesn't allow for submission of electronic claims, which in this age is something that should not be happening such that people have to submit hard copies. Thirdly, the contract with the people or the company, which I will not mention by name, which was doing the filing or keeping the records, was for whatever reason uh, cancelled or they withdrew as the screws were being tightened uh, within the road accident fund. So some of the things have been manufactured, and uh, the, me the members of the public have to have confidence in the road accident fund. Why? Because the reason we are seeing some of the things we are seeing, it's because screws are being tightened, the tap is being closed. Mm. The things that have been happening within the road accident fund, for instance, the money that the road accident fund would be paying for intermediaries, in other instances, are lawyers, unnecessarily and admin costs have been dropped dramatically. Mm -hmm. And those are the monies that should be going to the victims who arguably are the ones who the road accident fund is seeking mm -hmm. to compensate. Well, speaking of um, the road accident's budget and its bank accounts, um, what is, can you give us a sense of what the health of liquidity of the RAF is at the moment? Is there enough money to pay potential claims going forward? There is enough money to pay claims, certainly. Uh, one of the things that people who have been fleecing the road accident fund have mastered very well is to hold on to claims. The legislation currently says a claim that is submitted and the road accident fund has not responded to or rejected or assessed in 90 days, uh, yes, 60 days, 90 days, uh, I'll get that figure right, should be deemed to be a claim. It's 60 days, actually, in terms of the Road Accident Fund Act, Section 24, subsection 5. Now, what people, some lawyers would do, they would wait and hold on to these claims and submit them on the eve of the 60 days, obligating the Road Accident Fund to accept them as legitimate claims. So that tells us that there is a flaw in the legislation that should allow the road accident fund or the submission of forms to allow for checks and balances before that 60 days expires. So once that 60 days expires in terms of Section 24.5, the legislation says that uh, those claims, and I'm quoting, are valid in law in all respects. So in other words, whether it's empty, whether you have given wrong information, legislation as it stands say it is valid in law in all respects. That is something that is causing a problem for the road accident fund, as an example. So the confidence has to be there. The road accident fund is liquid. There is quite a lot of claims that are outstanding. Part of the reason is this piece of legislation as mentioned. Others are people who would hold on to these things and go flog the system in the way that we saw mm. in that not so uh, good sight to see at the Menlin offices. Now, now going by what you've shared with us by, uh, uh, tonight, I'm assuming that you feel encouraged and more positive about the turnaround plans that you've already put in place for the um, RAF, is part of that turnaround strategy uh, some kind of plan to try and catch up on those outstanding claims? Yes, certainly. 
uh, I am confident that the road accident fund is on the right track. Is it easy? No, it's not easy. Because they are addressing something that has come for years and years. Now, part of what is happening is that uh, the road accident fund is doing what is called block settlements. Uh, what is block settlements? To come to people and say, bring an amount of these claims which are 200 days old, whatever the case may be. So we try and start from the back and come to the front. And uh, that is one of the ways of trying to address it. The other one is to make sure, and the intention is to make sure that as per legislation, every claim is settled within 180 days. Now, most of these claims would come in with no supporting documents, which create more administrative work in terms of making sure that the process is cleaned. Part of this uh, process, Marcel, includes cleaning the system. Mm. There have been few people within RAF, I repeat, few, who have been colluding with some people outside to fleece the system. Now, as the screws are being tightened, they are feeling the pinch, and there is collusion in certain instances. Some people have been fired, Others are being investigated as we speak now. So in any system where there is a change, people resist, especially where there are people that are losing. Remember, the money that has been going to legal costs, as it is being uh, dropped or stopped, that money was going to somebody, and that somebody is not happy, and they are going to do everything in their power, whether it's going to court, whether it's getting attachments, and those are things that are happening. Unfortunately, these are the things that seem to get the attraction of uh, people out there without the actual positive uh, outcome that is happening as the screws are being tightened. Okay, thank you so much for that update. And I'm sure you wouldn't mind if we updated even that um, uh, over the coming weeks and months as we try and keep touch with um, developments and turnaround plans at the RAF. Thank you so much uh, for your time this evening. That's the Deputy Transport Minister, Lisa Manku, joining us virtually from Cape Town.